Blessings, blessings, blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm coming on tonight and my name is Minister Hill. Uh, I came to uh, bring a study tonight. I was asked by Apostle Johnson and, and First Lady, Miss Tammy, John, the, uh, Pastor Johnson, to come and do a study tonight uh, concerning uh, the word of God. And so I'm um, coming tonight with the word and we're going to be studying from uh, Matthew. And right, before Lord, we Lord. begin, can we pray together before I begin to this study on watch and pray? Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to you humble as we know how. Father God, we just want to thank you, our Father, which are in heaven, how will be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, Lord, our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Welcome. Thank you for having me tonight. I'm bringing a study tonight on watch and pray. And so when I begin to uh, look at Matthew, I'm coming out of Matthew and it's Matthew 26. We're coming out of Matthew 26 verse, starting with the 26 verse. And it's coming, it's dealing with the disciples as the Lord began to deal with the disciples on praying. And so uh, when we begin to read this thing is with Jesus being, uh, he was in, in, in prayer in Gethsemane. And so as he began to pray, he asked the disciples to go with him. He wanted to go because it, he needed to just steal away and pray. And so he was getting the disciples to go with him. And so as I began to read the word, and it says, then come at Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples, sit ye here while I go pray yonder. And so the Lord asked them to go with him because he needed to just steal away and pray. And, I, and Jesus wanted them to come and pray with him. And so as he told them to come and let just sit right here. And as I go pray, I need you to just keep watch. And so this is what I got from it when he told them, just sit right here. Sit in this place right here. And, and while I go pray yonder. And so when I started to look at that thing, when he said, sit and watch, just sit right here. Well, he was asking them to sit so that they can um, uh, be attentive. He wanted them to be attentive. And, and, and this was a time, we know that prayer is a time to be in secret. Prayer is the time to go and talk to the Lord about the things that concerns you, concerns him, uh, the things that concern the heart of God. And so as they began to sit there and the Lord said, I just need you to watch at the time. He said, I just need you to watch. Just watch for a minute. And so when I looked at watch, it was to mean to observe. We need to learn to observe what the Lord is speaking to us as he want us to go about our journey, as he put us on assignment, as he put us in a place where he wants us to just carry out the journey that he has assigned for us to do. And so when I looked at watch, watch also means when you're watching, you know you're on high alert, but you also, if you're on high alert, you're watching for uh, as your surroundings, you are watching yourself as well. And so when you're on the watch, that means that you're, you're, you're looking for warnings. You're, you may be looking for threats of the enemy in the word of God, because we knew that he was in Gethsemane. He was in the garden of Gethsemane. And so when he began, he said, just stay awake. When it means, it also means to just stay awake. You got to be alert. You can't go to sleep. You can't, you can't be all over the place. You just got to stay alert. You have to be mindful. You have to be watchful. You have to be on, uh, on guard as they would say. So, uh, that's what I got 
when he began to speak to them about the garden uh, in Gethsemane. And so he said, and he took with him Peter and the two sons of Je Jabez, uh, Zebedee, I'm sorry, Ze Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. The Lord was very sorrowful and heavy. So he told them, I need y'all to sit here. I need to go pray. I just need y'all to be right here for me. And and when and and then after that, he said unto them, he was talking to Peter and the two sons, and he said, uh, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. My soul is sorrowful and even unto death tarry here and watch with me and so when he said tarry that means i got a while to be here i need you to stay in place i need you to stay right here it may be a little bit longer than you expected but i just need you to stay alert and i need you to stay right here with me i need you don't leave just stay right here in this place i need you to stay with me and so and as he went a uh, little father, he, he fell on his face and prayed. And so when I look at the thing about prayer, when we pray, what does it mean when we go into prayer? It, it means us going in a secret place to spend time with God. It means that we are addressing, we're, we're going to address some things. We're, we're going to make a solemn request we got we got some things that we just need to spend time with god on one-on-one -on -one, and nobody can do that for us now sometimes we find ourselves where we get together and we pray but it comes a time where you it's just you and the father is you and god is you and god all alone where you can have that one-on-one -on -one time and so this is our request it's a it's a solemn request that we take before the lord and it's an expression it's is an expression of, of 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 thanks you know sometimes we may not be asking god for anything we just want to give him reverence and we want to give him uh thanks for we we got a heart of gratitude and it's so many things that we are thankful for and we just want to spend time in worship we want to spend that time with him and just love on him the way he have loved on us and loving us and so when we go into prayer, when we pray, what are the things that we expect when we go into prayer? Do we go with expectations of getting something from God or are we just looking for answer prayers? It can be so many things that we may be facing and there's so many things that we feel like we have to cry out to God on. And so as I begin to look at that thing as well, um right here he said as he told him i need you to tarry just tarry right here uh, i need you to go, stay right here in this place and when he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed saying oh my father if it is possible let this cup pass from me but nevertheless uh not as I will, but thy will. And so when we pray, that's how we address God. We we shouldn't be going to him uh, looking to be a show to the world or going in a place where we ask him for just what we want. We need to make sure that whatever we're asking in prayer is that it lines up with what God will is that he have for our assignment, that he have for our journey, that the things that he want us to help uh, with the people, whatever it is, we need to make sure that it's all on one accord of the will of the Father, not our own selfish desires and not about what we want personally, uh, but just knowing the will of God. What is what is his will? What is it that he will have for us? What is it that you want me to pray about, Father? And even when we don't know what to pray, 
we sit and we just start a relationship, just make sure we're in right standards with the Lord, that we can go before him and ask him for the things that need to be said and need to be done. Let it be the Lord's will, not our will, but the Lord's will. And so right here he says, uh, and he came unto the disciples and he finded them asleep. And said unto Peter, what could, ye, what could ye not watch with me one hour? Well, we know that the Lord, uh, we found that the Lord in the midnight hour, he will find himself going into this secret place. And when he went to this secret place, it was time that he spent it with him and the Father. And so now he wants the disciples to be a part of this. He won't he want to take the people uh that he's chosen. He he got his disciples. So now he's saying, Can you go with me? Can you sit here? Can you be on watch? Can now I need you to tarry with me? I I want you to pray as I pray, but I I gotta go. I can't tell you everything that I talk to the father about, but it's some things that, that are just personal at this time between jesus and the father and so here he is he said i need you to pray i need you to sit right here i need you to stay on alert and i need you to watch and i need you to pray with me can you pray with me and so here it was he gone away he went his separate way as he praying to the father now the disciples are sitting here in a place they're they're in a place where they're sitting but now when the lord comes back he say what could ye not watch with me one hour when he comes back they are asleep and so as i begin to uh look at this the Lord has put us in a place where he wants us in prayer. He said that my house should be the house of prayer. So if he wants the house to be a house of prayer and he wants us to be alert and he wants us to be where he wants us to be for us watching and looking and praying, then we should be able to stay awake. We must be woke. We we got to hear what the what what the father is saying to us so we can address it and we can be on one accord with what the heart of the father is saying. And so when I began to read again and the Lord began to deal with me and 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 there were some things that he was saying why we should pray. And, and 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 I remember when he uh when Jesus uh went was in the wilderness when he began to go in the wilderness and he was uh in the wilderness and he was tempted by Satan. Satan came in which we know is the devil. And so the devil started to tempt him with many things. Uh he hadn't ate, so he was hungry. And so he began to tempt him with food. He began to tell him of uh, 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 the things that he can bless him with, the things that he would do for him if he did certain things. But the Lord refused to do the things that Satan had required of him. And so in order for us to be able to, to resist the temptations of Satan, we must stay alert. We must be vigilant in our minds. We must we not we must not be with the cares of the world and trying to keep up with the worldly things if we want to hear the things that God desires for us on this journey. And we know that prayer would help us. Prayer would help us to keep from falling into temptation and in divers temptation you know a lot of things in life with the prides with the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the prides of life you know uh it kind of reminded me uh in verse 40 when he said what is it that you what is it that you couldn't just stay on watch with me for one hour 
he, this is what he said to the disciples. And so with that being said, if we are going to be on one accord with the Lord, then we can't be worried about the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the prides of life because we know that these things would distract you from your prayer life or uh, anything that takes you from the will of god anything that causes you to get to the place where your relationship is not with the father uh you don't have a relationship with jesus christ everything you find you know you know we see in the world as a uh, when you look at the worldly riches and the things in the world things begin to catch your eye and 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 them are the things of the lust of the flesh these are the things that uh the 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 lust of the flesh and the prize of life will get us in a place and the temptations the temptation when you begin with temptation temptation will get you off course of the very things that god will have for you to do or what the things that god will have you to say you you won't stay focused because you got so many other different things on your mind you know when god began to deal with you in such a way you will find your in, you will find yourself in a place where your mind start running all over the place i got to do this and i gotta do this and i gotta do that and the lord is saying no i need you to sit and i need you to watch i need you to pray and i need you to stay in a place of of alertness i need you to stay alert i need you to be a watchman and so with that being said uh in matthew when we looked at matthew uh as we go on when he asked him in 40 he said you can't you can't stay and watch for just an hour with me uh what is it and so we looked at it and then uh as we learn the spirit uh we know that the spirit is willing but sometimes the flesh is weak and so when i began to look at this as well he said the temptations of life uh the things of life and then the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh it starts to get you where your spirit may be willing lord i want to do the right things i want to uh be with you i want to uh, make sure I'm in the right place. But then he says in verse 41 of Matthew 26 and 41, he says, but watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. And the spirit indeed is willing. Uh, the spirit is willing, but he also let us know that the flesh is very weak and so with that being said uh as i began to look at that i said okay god okay now i understand that the flesh is weak and we'll find ourselves in a place what are some of the weak things that causes us uh to get off a of course what are those things that keeps us from praying and watching and doing the very things that we won't be tempted to the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the prize of life you know we look at society and society everybody uh it, even with the world you got people that uh want to be in a place where uh they won't the six figures they want they want the big houses they want the big cars and the big uh the land and so with that being said now god wants us to have nice things i don't want anybody to get me wrong in this god desires for us to have things but the best thing that we could possibly have with God is a spiritual walk with God because we know that the flesh we know that this body that we're in we know the things of the flesh we know the prize of life we know the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh 
is soon to come to pass. Uh, we know that we got to leave this earthly body. I don't care how many years we didn't work. I don't care what we did accumulated in this world. We know that we have to get out of this flesh. Uh, it's going to come a time where we're going to have to be in our spiritual bodies and we're we're not going to walk in the flesh always and so we have to be prepared for the very thing that god is getting us ready for he's getting us ready to walk in the spirit he get he's he's preparing us for worship at all times because we know when we when we get to heaven when we get with the father we're going to be at peace and we're going to be able to worship no more sickness no more death no more pain no more sorrows you know and this is what he was showing us in the flesh of man it's so much sorrow he let us know this he bared our pain. He bared our griefs. These are the things that the Lord done. And so with that being said, he said uh, in verse 42, he said, and he went away again the second time. Now he 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 went away and they, they were asleep the first time. So now he goes away again. And so the second time he goes away and uh, and he prays saying, oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And so we know the father's will for our lives is going to be done. And so that's why it's very important that we stay alert, we stay watchful, we stay prayerful, because well, the people are prepared. Oh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. Where where people are not prepared, you won't recognize, you won't be able to deal with the things that come your way, at, uh, if it hits you suddenly because you wasn't prepared. You a lot of people, uh, when things begin to go. Uh, wrong and things begin to hit us in life you know when things begin to frustrate us you know if we ain't prayed up we'll find ourselves in a place when i say we'll find ourselves in a place you know how when sickness begin to hit the families and hit our bodies when bills are due when things begin to get us in such a uproar things in life can become very stressful put it that way when stress begins to hit your life and you don't know what to do so it's very important that we have a prayer life and we watch as well as pray and the only way we're going to be able to watch if we have a prayer life because the very things that we pray and when we have a heart to incline our ear to God's heart, incline our our our, our very uh, ear to His heart, so we can hear His voice when He speak. Mm. And then when He speaks to us, then we're able to be on guard. We're able to walk in authority. We're able to move in power. Oh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. And so, and, and, and the main thing that the Lord is teaching us is that, yeah, we, the flesh in, within our bodies, we're flesh. And without God, without listening, having a close and personal relationship with God, we will find ourselves where we are dealing more with the flesh. We want to satisfy the flesh. You know how you get hungry sometimes. You know, uh, I have to be honest, you know, uh, people with addictions, they'll find themselves with, they'll want to satisfy the flesh more than they want to satisfy God. And so they'll find themselves, if, if, if it's a drug addiction, uh, they'll find themselves where they're going more after the drug instead of 
going after God. And God wants us in a place where we won't be tempted to the very things that are out in this world that are causing us to fall, that are causing us not to walk according to how the Lord will have us to walk. And, and we must know, uh, people of God, that we are, we are learning more now. We're learning because we're in the end times. We got to stay prayerful because we need to know uh, what we're facing. Uh, Jesus uh, dealt with the disciples on so many occasions because he was teaching them the very heart of God, the very things that they were going to have to face once he was removed from them and he was teaching them how to pray. He was getting them ready. So when he got ready to go, uh, and, and uh, to deal with the things he had to deal with for humanity. He was letting us know, I, I, you can't deal with the things of humanity if you're not inclined to the heart of God, if you're not inclined with the voice of God. And so, and he said, things will begin to happen suddenly. And so, uh, so we have to be careful. We have to uh we have to do what is written so we'll be able to know the very things when when things begin to approach us. We'll we'll know how to pray. We'll know how to deal with that stress. We'll know how to deal with that sickness. We'll know how to deal with that pain the way God will want us to deal with that pain. Because when people become where they're in a bunch of pain, in a bunch of agony, uh, when people find their cells in agony and, and in pain, they, a lot of people are quick to look to other things instead of looking to prayer. And so when we begin to look at other things and not look at the things that God has required of us, we'll find ourselves in a place where the enemy, the enemy has attacked us. The enemy will attack us. And we know as people of God, it's God people and Satan. And, and, and Satan has uh, devices. Satan has people. Satan has ways to get us all off track. And so we have to stay prayerful. We have to stay mindful. We have to be uh, sober in the mind. We have to be watchful and we can't, we can't be where we are uh, trying to uh, do everything else. And, you know, Satan comes to sift God's people like we, he comes to sift us and he, he want to find us at our weakest moments. He, he, he deals with us at our weakest levels. And uh, when things are not going right in our lives and when, when, when the adversary, when things begin to hit our life and we, and God is preparing us. He's preparing us for such time, for th such things where things won't weigh us down. When, when, when depression and anxiety and, 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 and shame and defeat and different things won't weigh you down. Because if you don't have that prayer life, you will find yourself in a place of drunkenness, in a place of anxiety, in a place of, of dealing with things in life that you just, you, you wouldn't know how to deal with it. And so here it is. We got to stay prayerful. We got to stay vigilant, and we got to stay mindful of the things that the Lord wants for us. And so, uh, and when it came to the second time of Jesus going to pray and, 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 and he came, he, he, and then he came back again. He came and found them asleep again. He finds the body asleep again. And now he's telling us it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up and be 
watchmen. Be on your guard. Be 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 alert. You, it, you know, it's a difference between uh, day shift guards and night shift guards. You know, you can see more things in the daytime in the light. And that's what some people would say. But if you don't have that uh, prayerful life, if you're not prayerful, if you're not watchful, even in the daytime, People can be blind to the very thing that's sitting right in the light. It could be right in their face, but they're missing it. They're missing the very thing. And so um, with that being said, and so the Lord finds them asleep again for their eyes were heavy. They just sleep. And, and you know, the enemy finds, you know, after doing everything in the world and, and going about your being, and you know, when you go to work them eight hours or 16 hours, you know, when you come home, you real tired from work and you will find yourself, all I want to do is go to bed sometime. And to be honest about it, sometimes you so tired after them 16 hours, sometimes you may go on and shower and sometimes you will fall asleep on that couch or sit in that chair and it's over with. And so these are the things that is uh, uh, to make a parable of it. These are the things that the enemy, the world got so much going on and the world in society, it makes you feel, you know, you got to work. You got to work hard. You got to you got to work hard. You got to play hard for everything that you need. But when God is telling us, if you would just seek me. Seek the king, seek me in my kingdom of righteousness. Seek the kingdom of righteous first. Then all things, all these things will be added unto you. But so many of us, because I've done it, I've been in that place where so many of us, we we was running after everything. We was running after people. We were running after uh uh mates. We were running after our children we were running after so many things and we got distracted and so here it was with the disciples they were distracted they they just sleeping bored you know how the enemy will come in you know how it is when you read the word of god Sometimes you get in the word of God and the first thing the enemy do, the first the thing the enemy want to do is get your bored and, and, and you start falling asleep in the word. That, that That's the same thing that happened with the disciples that walk with Jesus. They, they began to sleep on him. He told them, stay alert, watch, pray. But can you just do it for one hour with me? Can you pray with me for one hour? And so with this, he said, after this, he said, and he left them and went away again. Not did he go away the first time. Not did he go away the second time. And not did he go away just those two times. But now he finds himself going away again the third time. And while he's away the third time, he leave them again. He leaves them again and away he went and he prayed for the third time. And I'm quite sure he had a lot going on in his own mind being a man, just being a, a human. You know, we human and we in the flesh and the flesh is weak. And, 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 and so we have to stay prayerful. We have to stay vigilant. We have to stay where we can stay in power, where we can stay in love and stay with the sound mind that God wants us to stay with. And so as he went away the third time saying the same words, then in verse 45, he comes and he then cometh he to his disciples and say unto them, sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand and the son of man is portrayed into the hands of the sinners. 
Now, if you are asleep on God and you can't stay woke and hear the very heart of God, then you will find yourself in a place where the enemy is overpowering you because you don't have a prayer life. You're not in the word of God. You won't study the word of God. You, 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 you won't get with the people of God so they can teach you what you need to know about the word of God. And so here it is. He said, go ahead, sleep on. You, you, you can go on and sleep. Go on and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. And the son of man is portrayed into the hands of the sinners. And so here it is. He rise and he let us, he told them, let us be going. Behold, he is at the hand that do it betray me. I'm at the hands of the very people that's supposed to be praying. The very enemy is at me, but I'm not alert. I, 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 I didn't got sidetracked. I'm looking at everything. This illness is racking my body. Cancer is racking my body. Uh, I'm diabetic. I'm 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 sitting up with a heart disease. I've I've had strokes. I I can't one side. See, these are the very things that comes to distract us. You know, a lot of people let illnesses get them off track. Uh, they start looking at self and take their eyes off Jesus. And and these are the very things that he was saying as he began to speak about prayer we must have a, a prayer life for repentance it's in, important that we have a life a prayer life for repentance uh a prayer life for gratitude uh a prayer of thanksgiving we we must be uh a prayer of praise we 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 praise him in a prayer of worship uh uh, we need to learn to pray where when the Lord tell us to pray, uh, pray corporal. We need to know uh, how to pray so we can hear the heart of God, uh, so we can hear the Lord God's voice. Uh, even sometimes when we pray in tongues, uh, it's a different, it's different types of prayer, uh, prayer for meditation. Uh, to flow uh, through us in a way. Uh, Sometimes not just saying nothing, but just reading the word of God and taking it in and praying over the very thing that God requires of us to pray over. Uh, the prayer of uh, declaration and, and prayer helps us. It helps us to grow closer to God. It helps us to grow closer. It helps us to grow closer with our faith, walking in our faith, because we know that faith without works is dead. And we can't do the works if we don't have the faith. And we can't do, uh, we can't have faith without doing the works. And it go hand in hand. So in order for us to have and hear and be hearers and doers of the word, then we have to have a prayer life. We have to know uh, when, our, when our leaders need our help in places. Uh, we have to pray over our leaders. Uh, we have to hold them up, you know, we, uh, just like Jesus wanted them to hold him up in the spirit. Uh, we we have to pray it. We know that prayer is spiritual. This ain't nothing corner about prayer. Prayer is not where we walk in cornerly, but it's in the spirit. We we have to lift our leaders up 
in 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 prayer we have to hold their arms up in prayer and this is what he took them to a place where he said he chose these people he chose these disciples because he figured that they would be on guard they would be on 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 the very things that he needed them to be on and so with this the lord says um we watch and we pray we can only remain faithful we can only remain faithful with god if we are devoted to prayer we 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 can't have a prayer life we can't we can't we can't stay focused. We can't. We can't do. We can't stay watchful and prayerful. And if we're not devoted, you have to be devoted. It comes a time now. I understand what he was saying the other day to me. When you have to master, you have to master yourself. You have to discipline. You got to have some discipline for yourself. You have to. Uh, be mindful you have to be sober you have to be uh in a place where you're disciplining yourself where okay yeah i didn't went out there and i didn't work today but even though before get up before you go to work get up uh 30 minutes before time and spend time with god before you go on your job or uh, before you go uh, to do the Father's will in the world. Get up and spend some time with God so you can hear the very voice of God so you will know what your assignment is calling for. And so uh, in prayer, we continually to allow God. We must allow God uh, to forgive us. Uh, through prayer. Uh, that's why he called us into repentance. We know repentance is, is, is where we turn from the very things that has separated us from God. We know when things begin to separate us from God. We know we're not praying. We know we're not fasting. We know that we're not listening to God. We're doing everything because we're trying to keep up with the world. We're trying to keep up with everything of the world. We're straddling the fence. We, we want God on this level, but then we want the things of the world on this level. And so now here it is. We didn't put God down here. When God's supposed to be above the very things that you want of the world. And so, so we ask God for repentance and we, and we pray every day that we uh, be strengthened in our mind, in our body, in our soul, where our spirit man that our spirit man, that God can continually to forgive us. Forgive us on a daily basis. Forgive us and, and, and forgive us for our sins and, and cleanse us. We, you know, we have to, we have to, we, he have to cleanse us. Uh, we have to be in a place where he's dealing with us on an everyday basis. This, he got to teach us what we need to know. And if we're not prayerful, if we're not devoted to God in prayer, then we're not going to be devoted to uh, a prayer life. We're not going to be devoted into uh, what he can teach us, where he can strengthen us, where we can obey him. In John 14 and 14, as he said, uh, we need to be in a place where we can stay in the place where God has required us so he can deal with us as people of God, so we can uh, stay on one accord so we can live the exact way that God wants us to be. And so the Holy Ghost warns us we must be ready. Don't you know the only way that we're going to stay uh, devoted if we have Jesus inside of us. It, and, and, and he's the one that fills us with the Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Ghost warns us, we must be ready. We got to stay ready at all times. 
We got to be uh we got to be ready for we know that the time is coming where the Lord is on his way. And so with that being said, uh we we got to be ready because we know we got to stand before him and give an account for our lives. We got to give an account for the very things that God required of us to do, that we let the cares of this world, we 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 were so wanting to be with the cares of the world that we neglected our walk with God. We neglected to pray. We neglected to watch. We neglected. We neglected the very thing that God told us to do. And I want y'all to go and read it. Uh, Romans 14 and 12, uh, 1 Peter 4 and 5, and Matthew 12 and 36. Uh, these are the things that the Lord led me to as we begin. And so I'm going to tell you this, even though uh, I'm, we're about to wrap it up. We must, we must never take our eyes off Jesus. Because the minute we take our eyes off God, because the day we can be taking our eyes off God is the very day that he may soon return and our values begin to shift our attention, wonders, and soon we will find ourselves living like the world if we take our eyes off God. Remember when Peter was walking on the water and Jesus told him to come and he trusted the voice of God and he was able to walk on that water. But the very minute he took his eyes off Jesus, it was the very time he began to sink. And so that's why I said, we can't afford to take our eyes off Jesus. We cannot afford to take our eyes off God. And we must be empowered with the power of the Holy Ghost on a daily basis so that we and, and, and that we will bear much fruit for the kingdom of God. Because apart from him, remember what he said, that the, the tree is known by the fruit that it bears. And we know if we're not bearing the fruits of God, the very fruits of God, then we know that it's very little fruit. And we know that that tree, if a tree, if it's even in your yard, if that tree begin to rot, the first thing we want to do, we want to cut it down. We want to get it out the way because those, them limbs, them, them branches begin to fall. They begin to fall. And, and, and so here it is. When the branches begin to fall, we know that that tree is rotten. And a rotten tree that give rotten fruit it got to be cut off. It got to come down. And so we want to be where we keep our eyes on Jesus. Make sure that we're praying. Make sure that we're walking. Pray without seasoning. Seasoning. Pray without seasoning. Because it's very important that we pray without seasoning. Don't never stop praying. Don't never stop watching. Be mindful, be vigilant, be sober-minded. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 tells us this. Be mindful. Stay prayerful at all times. We got to stay where we need to be. And 1 Timothy 6 and uh, verse 18 and 19, it tells us these very things, the things that we need to be mindful of the way that we supposed to be on watch, the way we supposed to be in prayer. Stay prayerful, stay mindful of the very things. And when we 
live with the expectations of the Lord, then when the Savior returns, you will know that you have done all that you could possibly do to stand. Because we know when we live in an expectation of the Lord and the Savior to come, we as people of God, we expect persecution. We expect the very things from the world. We don't expect the world to understand us because they don't understand. They didn't understand Jesus. So they would not understand us. And until then, let's just stay in the word of God. We need to read 2 Timothy 3 and 12. We need to read Matthew 24 and 9. 1 Peter 4 and 12. Remember that our spirit may be willing, but the flesh is weak. And we must do everything we can to deny our flesh that we can stay out of temptation, that we would know the very heart of God, that we can stay in a safe place, covered by the Father, covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember what he says. Can you not keep watch with me for one hour? That's all I needed. I'm teaching you how to avoid temptation. I'm teaching you but you can't learn if you sleep on God because we need him in this very hour. We need him in this very season. This is what we need. We can't allow our physical needs. We can't allow the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the prides of life calls us to disobey God. We can't allow it. Don't let him catch us sleep. Stay mindful. Stay prayerful. Because prayer helps us to escape temptation and all the things that we are about to face all the things that are about to take place and we must be able to stand before the son of man which is jesus christ our lord and savior luke 21 and 34 21 and 36. May God have a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his word. I hope you got something out of this Bible teaching. I hope you enjoy. I did. And I thank the uh, apostle and the first lady for having me to come. And I love you all. In Jesus' name, I really do. I thank you. It's been a blessing. I've really enjoyed it. Take the lesson to heart. Don't let Jesus uh, find us asleep. Don't let God find us asleep on the very assignments and the things that he will have us to do. Be blessed now. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the time of fellowship. We thank you for your teachings. We thank you for giving us the clarity that we need in this journey. 
We thank you for this, this uh, network, Father God. We thank you for the apostle. We thank you for his wife in Jesus' name. We thank you for the ministry, Father God, and we love you and we thank you. Y'all have a blessed night in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah, yeah, mm, oh, Jesus. Here we are again. Jesus. 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 We are here again in your presence. Thank you, Jesus. You're the one. You're the one. You're the only one. Mm -hmm. Ah, shut up. Oh, gee, gee. Ero mama shanaya. Woo, hasha sheta mashanaya. Oh, 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 Jesus. Touch, touch, touch by your power. Touch, we need your touch. Touch, touch us. You know how to touch us. You know when to touch us. And you know where to touch us. Touch, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 have your way again today. You have blessed us so much. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, we love you, Lord. Um, oh, we love you, Lord. Uh, everywhere, uh, for you are everywhere, God. Uh, you are everywhere, God. Uh, touch everywhere. Uh, touch everywhere. Uh, touch and we will be touched. Uh, touch, uh, and we will be whole. Uh, touch, uh, oh, uh, Spirit of the living God. Mm. Yero ma shana ya o. Mm, 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 mm. You can touch when nobody else can touch. And here the Lord says, touch. Touch me again. Touch now. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. The mighty God. You're mighty. You're almighty. You know the whens and the where. Uh, you know the what's and the go. Uh, the ins and the outs. Uh, Jesus. Uh, oh. Jesus. Jesus. Hasha, 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 mashanta. Hasha, mashanta. wonder absolutely a wonder thank you for being in the midst of us you have been here all the week you have showered us with your blessings we shall never forget 
you are doing great in mightier things. So we say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. We'll say yes, and we'll trust you and obey when your spirit.